Hello everyone, I always welcome you to the course. My name is Jan Sasui Mano and the name of my channel is Infinity Board Console. Please subscribe for update videos. Okay guys, so on today's tutorials, we are going to learn about how to convert a block plan or a site plan received from the client into a block plan in Revit. So let's move into the tutorials we have for you today. So I'm going to open the template we work on the last time which i save it at where i save my files so i just have to open it so if you are in need of the exercise file just keep it at the comment section box i want the exercise file and i'm going to provide it for you so this what this this was what we did the last time adding grid lines in our revit file and also adding levels as you can see level one level two level three so if you haven't watched that video kindly check it at the top here and watch that video to learn how to add levels and how to add grid lines so on today's tutorials as we said we are going to convert a site plan into a block plan in Revit and also provide the various setbacks we have okay so we have to select the grid lines that we created and delete everything but first of all I would like to show you the files in which I have for this program today so this is the site planning which I have here I have the site plan here and we also have a file in which I'm going to show you what you are going to do. So, order of presentation, we have some exterior views, block plan, and the floor plans, electrical layout plans, and other drawings as well. So, this is the exterior view, and we also have the block plan. So, our main focus here today is to convert this site plan into a block plan, as you can see here and also provide a setback in which people can you can have a passage area at the side of the building and also have a rail back area at the back of the building and also have a frontage area where you can park your cars and walk and have gatherings as well so this is the ground floor plan so let's move into the lesson that we have today so before you can create um, a, a, um, a site plan you first have to know uh, before you can create a block plan you have you first have to know the size of your site plan so the size of our site plan is here and it has been tabulated in in an, a plan data for us with a bearing and a distance here so we have these numbers here having one at the last end having two at the last end and three and four so it means when we move from this area it means when we move from this area that's one to this area that's two to this area that's three to this area that's four okay so how do we convert or how do we get this shape in rivet just have to check the distance here and we have 43 feet 0.9 inches we have 80 feet we have 41.7 feet we have 82 feet 0.1 inches so this is the figures in which we can found here so i'm going to convert them in rivets for you to see how it works so before that let me use the calculator on my machine to convert them so that you see how it works So we have we first have to get where we are starting our one and our one starting from one here to two is 43 feet 0.9 inches so we have to convert 43 times 300 so somebody will ask me that why am i multiplying 43 times 300 to change feet into millimeters you have to multiply by 300 
to change feet into meters you have to multiply by 0 0.300 that's in millimeters okay so I converted 43 multiply by 300 into millimeter and I have 12,900. So let's add the 9 inches that we have here, which is 9 divided by 25. So inches are multiplied by 25 to get it in millimeters. So I have to add this one. So now I'm having 13,125 mm. So when I come back into my rivet area, I have to come into massing and size. Under the massing and size, this is where you can create the property boundary that we have. The property boundary, as you can see in the site plan, something like this. This is the property boundary, and also this one is ordinary site which has not been established and we have a root in front of the site this also for example a root in the site okay so when i come to the property line we have two types of two ways of creating um, a site plan we have creating by entering the distance and the bearing in which you can see from here that we have something we call bearing and distance under the bearing area you can insert and put your figures inside but on today's tutorial we are going to use creating by sketch so under the creating by sketch our first figure we have was 13,125 so we first have to put our cross edges from here and do 13,125 Amen. So we had a tutorial in which talks about um, the project unit that we have, which we said you can change the area in which you want into millimeters. You can also change it into meters and also fractional feet and fractional inches. So what we are using here is the millimeter that's why we are able to convert this one from feet into millimeters so guys let's move on we've managed to create our first boundary line okay so let's move on to see what we have here so we are moving from we've moved from one to two so two to three is 80 feet so 80 feet will just be multiplied by 300 so we have 24,000 so 24,000 we just have to put a line here and just key in 24,000 okay so we are in progress so back to the site plan and back to our calculator we've managed to draw 2 to 3 so now let's draw from 3 we've managed to draw 2 to 3 right so let's do 3 to 4 so 3 to 4 is 41.7 inches so 41 feet multiply by 300 which is 12,300 and the 7 feet is 7 inches divided by multiply by 25 we have 175 so 175 plus 12,900 which is 13,075 so it means from here to here will be 13,075 so back to the last boundary we have four back to one again which is 82 feet one inches so in our calculator let's convert 82 into millimeter that's 82 multiplied by 300 and the one feet one inches is 25 so we are going to add 25 plus 25 which we are going to get 24,625 so we we'll just do 24,625 here. So we realize that 
these are not meeting so when you check in the site plan here you can see we have one side having um, a bigger lens so what we will do here is we just hold this one and use the tab key to join it like this so we have a shape like this you just have to do finish so this is the side plan we've managed or the property line we've managed to create so when i come to edit table and i'll do yes so you can see the distance and the bearing have been populated here as we've done in our area our working area so the next thing that we have to create is to create um, the topo surface so when you come to the 3d you realize that this is just an imaginary line to show us that we've created a property line so for us to get a topo surface in which our building or our edge surface in which our building will be placed on it just have to come back to the massing and click on topo surface so under the topo surface we just do place points and we put a point here a point here and a point here and a point here then we do finish so when i come back to my 3d you can see we have the topo surface being created i can also do realistic to see that's the edge which have been created so when i open the files i give i show to you here you can see this was the topo surface here and this was the boundary the, the boundary wall the proposed building the pavement bricks the land and stuff so we are going to also do same here so whilst we are having this the second thing that we have to do is to provide a setback and i'm going to show you what is the setback about so the setbacks helps you or gives a passage area around your buildable area so we have something we call the maximum size of a house which we have to multiply the footage area or the site plan area and divide it by 35 degrees which gives us the setback so here is the real setback which is the back of the house and here are the side side of the house and here is the frontage of the house so when you check this example you can see we have 20 feet 5 feet 15 feet and 5 feet as well so it depends on the country in which you are every country has its building code so you just have to check what has been provided so that you provide them into your building so that your drawing can be stamped and also can be build, built so i'm going to use a detail line to create um, my setback so let me provide let's say here as 20 feet or 20 meters and also do here as 1500 and also do here 1500 and also do here 6000 so I have provided a set box for my block plan so it means this area is going to be where our main building is going to be our main building is going to be so the exercise file i showed you we are going to draw this in our in our main area where the site plan is so you are going to provide this drawing here in order to get a similar file as we've done here so if you have any comments or if you don't understand anything for now 
just let me know so in our next tutorials we are going to draw the building or the site or the plan here in the site plan so guys if you have any comments just give it at the comment section boys thanks for watching and subscribe for a new video thank you bye for now